keys to ancient megaliths. Yes, I know I found some. Okay, now look at look at the Sphinx here. Do you see that extension on its chest right to the right of the name of my institute, the American Institute for Pyramid Research? Right to the at the end of that, there's what I call the keystone or the boss. That is not part of the anatomy of a lion or the anatomy of a pharaoh. It's in plain sight. It's a keystone, okay? Now, this is a modified philosopher's stone, which I'm suggesting corresponds to the keystone. Now, the philosopher's stone, the actual stone itself, was supposed to be able to turn metal into gold, you know, lead into gold, transmutation, you know, and so alchemy was that science. Well, the symbol itself is like is like that because in the end, what's more important really? You know, the gold of this world, okay, so you're, you're rich, right, okay? Versus the gold of spirit, you know, knowing that you're enlightened, that you're connected, that, that you know, you're, you're golden, you're balanced, okay? So in the end, this symbol could be a help to us in those things. The philosopher's stone could, the symbol of the stone could lead, that's the lead that might lead us to some gold. So here's the modified symbol. Uh, the circle, the red circles formed by the, the equilateral triangle, then an exoscribed circle, and then the apothem, which is also the diameter of the circle. Now notice on the philosopher's stone, the traditional one, there's no circle there and there's no apothem. Okay, so that's, and I'm suggesting that that modified philosopher's stone is connected to the keystone on the sphinx and that these are the lead that ha have real gold, okay? So here's Stonehenge. That's north, usually we put it on top, but I'm having the heel stone on the top to show that the slope angle of the Great Pyramid is formed 51.85 degrees by those lines. There's a connection between the Great Pyramid and Stonehenge. That's the Aubrey Circle, the largest, widest circle in the Stonehenge configuration. Here's an equilateral triangle drawn around it, and then that's the apothem of that triangle and the diameter of the Aubrey Circles, and then an exoscribed circle. Okay, so there's our mini philosopher's stone or modified philosopher's stone. Let's look at its geometry. The main thing I want to do here is show that in these lines we've shown you that if we take the equilateral triangle to be the base, so a unit triangle, that's going to be one. What are the other dimensions now if we make that one? Well, the apothem is 0.866. It's, it's channeling square root of three, half of it. And then this is incredible. The red circle is 2.72. That's one megalithic yard. That's how many feet are in a megalithic yard. Like, that's incredible because Alexander Tom, the, the Oxford uh, uh, metrologist who deduced the megalithic yard by measuring a bunch of ancient buildings, and he said this measurement is there, and he was ousted, like, like a lot of, you know, da Vinci's are from the, the mainstream community. He was ousted. Alexander Tom's not accepted. But he's right. Look at it. It's right built into the, the philosopher's stone, Okay. 3.63 is the gold circle. That's the circumference. So if you take the uh, gold circle and divide it by the uh, red circle, you get four-thirds, which is like a key to Egyptian math and geometry. That's where the connection with the, the keystone comes in here. So the keystone, uh, Mark Lehner in his 1991 PhD thesis on the Sphinx, says is 4 meters by 2.3 meters. Okay, so what? There's the 2 and then the 0.3. You could divide that, you know, 4 and 2 a double square, which is the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid, Giza is a double square, and then an extension of 0.3. But what is the riddle of the Sphinx? Well, what goes on four in the morning goes on two at noon, and in the evening goes on three. Well, it's mankind. We crawl when we're young, we walk, and then we get old, we use a cane. Four, two, three. But that's stupid. Even though that's an Oedipus Rex, that's the, that's the riddle, that's the most famous riddle of the Sphinx. You know, what goes on... That's kind of silly, isn't it? But look at the reality. The, the Sphinx keystone has the 423. All right, so let's take the 2.3, the width, and divide it by that double square. Just, you know, just take the 2. All right, so when you do that, you get the square root of 4 thirds. We're getting at the root of this central part of Egyptian math, the 4 thirds, okay? Getting at the root, all right? There's a connection between the Philosopher's Stone and the Keystone. Okay, here's another one. I didn't give this dimension when we're looking at the unit triangle. What's the diameter of the gold circle? It's 1.155.
boring, so what? That just happens to be the square root of 4 thirds. It's 2.3 and change divided by 2. Okay? And also, now let's, let's look at the, the keystone again. Instead of dividing the, the width by the other width, 2 by 2.3, let's, let's divide the height, 4, by 2.3. And you get the square root of 3. So there's another connection because we saw the square root of 3 is in the Philosopher's Stone. Okay? And here it is in the keystone. Wow. Okay, and I just think it's interesting that the volume formula for a sphere has four thirds in it. And so we're going from just a plane geometry, like a circle I drew on a keynote, 2D to 3D. Expand. Take this stuff into real life. These numbers have meanings, and you have a life you have to live, and that's the gold. That's the gold. So there's some there's some help for us here. There's some teachings. Let's look at the geometry, though. We said that was the geometry, but the real geometry puts this on Earth, because that's what geometry means, Earth measure. Okay, so when we do that, you know, we, we talked about these lines that I'm putting on here now. You know that here's the Aubrey circle, there's the equilateral triangle. Okay, well, here was a breakthrough that I got. So a great metrologist, David Kenworthy, uh, sent me this. When we put the equilateral triangle in using the diameter of the Aubrey circle as the apothem, so we're taking that unit circle, but now we're not just playing with it on our computer. We're actually going to lay it down in the earth over Stonehenge. And we do that, when we do that, the length of each side is 330 feet. Okay, so we can get some other real world geometry here. So the apothem is 105. We'll see what that's connected to in a second. And you've got the, the orange. Uh, circumference is 330 megalithic yards. It's an incredible connection that the 330 feet in the triangle yields 330 megalithic yards, okay, which is the circumference of the Aubrey circle. Wow, okay. And then 440 in the red, the exoscribe circle, what's that? Oh, that's just the side of the Great Pyramid, 440 royal cubits, okay. And so the 105 we talked about, that is the diameter of the Sarsen circle. Like, that's what we think of when we think of Stonehenge, the big Sarsen circle. Wow. Okay, what else is here? Well, we know there's the connection to the Great Pyramid there and the slope angle. What about this? What about the diameter of the red circle? Okay, it's 140. What's that? 140. That's the length of the Sphinx in royal cubits. And then this last dimension from the bottom of the equilateral triangle down to the edge of the red circle, what's that? Well, that's 35. Well, big deal. What's that? That's the width of the Sphinx. Oh my goodness, this is incredible. We take this modified philosopher's stone from the first little circle, we get the Aubrey holes, the Aubrey circle, and then we take the exoscribe circle, we get the Great Pyramid, okay? And then we uh, take the uh, apothem of the equilateral triangle, or the, the diameter of the smaller circle, and we get the Sarsen circle at Stonehenge. And when we take the full diameter of the big circle, we get the Sphinx. Oh my gosh, the modified Philosopher's Stone yields the dimensions of the world's three greatest stone monuments. The Great Pyramid, Stonehenge, and the Great Sphinx. And we saw there's a connection between the Keystone on the Sphinx and this Philosopher's Stone. There's much more here, people. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. This is holy stuff. Uh, I'm leaving for Egypt the day after tomorrow. I've made the offer before. Final, you know, if you want me to check out something you 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 want looked at, you know, you can't measure things there, but you know, I I can take photographs. I leave several days of research before my tourists come. So if you'd like me to check check something out at Giza or in Egypt, lay it on me, you know, because uh, I have my own agenda. But when other people send me things too, it gets me in, in studying other things, which I like to do. So please subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications button. Again, thanks for watching.